So today on Sports File, unfortunately, uh, this is not going to be a happy podcast. Uh, I get a couple of requests in recent months to do uh, a little essay on uh, this player who was part of the successful 1986 Stanley Cup run for the Montreal Canadiens. Now, for many of the modern generation of the NHL, uh, they know a little bit about the goon era of the uh, NHL of the 70s, 80s, and 90s with this person. I'm not saying he's the greatest fighter ever that uh, suited up with the Habs, but my God, he made an impact, no pun intended. We're going to talk about the late, and I think great, John Cordick. Now, John Cordick was a uh, very, very high-ranked prospect when he was drafted by the Montreal Canadiens in round four of the 1983 entry draft, 78 overall. Uh, Just like his brother who played with the Flyers later on, he was a very rugged defenseman. Uh, for the Portland Winterhawks, he was probably one of the best uh, defensemen of the early 80s area for that WHL team. His second season with Portland in 83-84, he had 59 points and went on to uh, uh, similar success with the Seattle Breakers the next season with 53 points in uh, 46 games. Now, uh, he also uh, played 25 games with Portland that year, getting 28 points. So he's on a, a point-of-game pace in the WHL. And when Montreal brought him up, uh, they knew he was a rugged player, but he ended up being the uh, key enforcer for the Montreal Canadiens in the, uh, again, the cup run. Now, Cordic's fighting style would be best described as direct. He was a very accurate uh, puncher. He basically, not say intimidated the, the other players in the NHL, but... He was considered uh, one of the top scrappers. And uh, what became uh, his calling card actually happened in the playoffs in 86 when he played Boston and uh, Montreal was trying to stand up against uh, Jay Miller and some of the other uh, tough players for Boston. And the infamous fight where Cordick took on Miller and Miller got uh, instigated the fight and took extra penalty minutes and uh, kicked the door of uh, the visitor's dressing room in frustration and fell down. That kind of summed up the destruction of Boston in the playoffs that year and the ascension of uh, Montreal. Now, 86-87, he uh, got the regular playing time with Montreal, getting eight points, including five goals in 44 games. And in 87-88, he uh, continued his uh, ascension uh, in Montreal uh, on the rear guard side. But there was uh, rumors and published reports that uh, Cordic was falling into the bad side of the NHL and getting involved allegedly with heavy steroid use, uh, cocaine use, drinking. He had uh, issues with his family and his father. He felt that uh, his fighting style was was an embarrassment to his uh, very protective father and uh, his family didn't want him to have that role in Montreal. And of course, back then it's different. Uh, Enforcers were called upon to do stuff like this. There was a lot of players like Cordica League and uh, Probert and all that. And uh, not saying it was uh, they were telling Cordic to fight, but he really, really was good at fighting. And the fans really enjoyed seeing him take on the top players of uh, the other squads in the league. By, uh, but, but by 88, 89, he had uh, overstayed his welcome in Montreal. He was traded to uh, Toronto Maple Leafs in 1989 for Russ Cortal. Now he spent uh, part of the three seasons with Toronto But uh, again, according to published reports, he became more and more enamored with steroid use and cocaine. And uh, the Capitals and the Nordiques later took a chance on him. But, uh, you know, uh, the writing was on the wall. He had to get cleaned up. Now, he signed a contract with his uh, hometown Edmonton Oilers or Edmonton squad. And he played in Cape Breton for uh, some some of the 91-92 season. But uh, again, it didn't... uh, it didn't bode well for his future. Now, the uh, the courting situation became extremely, extremely tenuous, and by uh, summer of uh, uh, 1982, uh, he had an incident where uh, the cops were called to uh, a Quebec hotel, and uh, he was found to be aggressive, found to be uh, you know threatening police, threatening himself. The cops took him into custody. And uh, because of factors uh, that it was already battling and factors of the arrest, his uh, heart stopped and he died. Now, John Cordick's uh, 
legacy was talked about a little bit about the in the infamous uh, SI article, which actually was in uh, one of the, the biggest uh, SIs of the uh, the 1992 year, which was Deion Sanders on the outside talking about these uh, double sport. But the death of a goon article by uh, John Scher uh, is considered one of the uh, the best hockey articles of the 90s to talk about the goon culture of the NHL. It broke down with Pierre Paget and different people, Jean Pro, that were interviewed for the article. What was required of people like Cordic, what was required uh, from the goons. But to call John Cordic as a goon is a misnomer because he was a, he was a lost soul. He was a, according to his family and the people that really knew him, he was a very nice guy. Uh, you know, always big with a smile, good with good with people uh, at times when he was sober. But with steroids, cocaine, vodka, uh, the different battles of an NHL player, he was basically a, a man-child in a lot of ways, and that really caught up with him. Now, I don't think Montreal trading him uh, caused the major issues he faced later on. He had when he was Montreal, but uh, there was big rumors about the Montreal uh, players, especially younger ones, uh, doing cocaine with Cordic, doing cocaine uh, under the uh, the uh, what they call the uh, the non eyes of the coaching staff. You turn a blind eye to what was going on. But again, in 19, late 80s, early 90s, there was a lot of stuff going on in the NHL. We had cocaine abuse with the Oilers. We had cocaine abuse throughout teams in the league. That was a drug of choice for a lot of people. And steroids were uh, becoming more and more prevalent, uh, as we call it, the Lyle Alzado uh, era. Now, I'm not making any excuses how, why John Cordick died. Some, some of it was self-inflicted and some of it was not. But uh, if he was taken care of, like uh, maybe a lot of players are taken care of now, uh, he could have been suffering from concussion syndrome. He could have been suffering from uh, mental health issues. It's not me to say. The fact is, when he died, a lot of uh, Montreal Canadiens fans uh, were sad because, you know, he, he was a big part of that 86 uh, team. And I basically think if he would have stayed around for the 89 Cup run, who... Uh, who knows what would have happened? Maybe trading for Russ Cortnall was the, the good idea, but wasn't a good idea for Cordic. And there wasn't any intervention uh, program to an initial PA. We see now that uh, would have been there for him. Now, I think of John Cordic uh, very fondly because I remember being at JR's restaurant in Woodstock, watching the Miller fight, and I said to myself, "I'm watching history here," and I didn't really really know what it meant. The visuals were stunning. The fact is that Cordic was standing up for the Montreal Canadiens new generation, the, the new Habs, as we say. And I get, what, like I said, he played 18 games in the playoffs and each game was important. I think without Cordic, there wouldn't have been room for Bob Ganey, Bob, Bobby Smith, even Claude Lebeau, uh, Stéphane Richer, all the players. So for me, uh, no Cordic, no Stanley Cup in 86. I know there's other factors that have played, but for me, uh, he has that legacy. Now, Cordic's uh, extended family are not talked about anymore. I just wished him uh, uh, Godspeed and I wished him prayers because, you know, he was such a such a big person to many members of the Cordic family and uh, did not have him around. Any any death because of hockey, directly, indirectly, uh, that can be prevented as a tragedy. And uh, John Cordic is a tragedy. But I still, again, as of two minds, I'm sorry he passed, but when he fought, man, it was pins and needles. It was just tremendous. There was so much energy with his fighting style. And if you like fighting in hockey like I do, uh, Cordic was, you know, one of the best. So on this uh, beautiful Tuesday, we're waiting for a little uh, bad weather to come into Brunswick. We wish you the best. And, uh, you know, at least in 2019, the people like John Kerr and Cordic can get help and be protected. Uh, he should He should still be alive. Imagine what he would have done as a, even as a coach. I mean, any Montreal Canadian that gives back to the sport, which he would have, would have been a great legacy. So I feel sorry for all the young kids at Edmonton and out west and uh, different uh, regions that could have been uh, learned uh, how to make it to the NHL. In this case, Cordic may have uh, dissed himself for fighting. Who knows? I hope he would have anyway, because you know uh, it's okay to fight, but that's not a reason just to stay in the NHL. But you know, you're here or there. Anyway, have a good morning. Bye.